YouTube. Get ready for the 359 Podcast with Roger Cheng and Ben Fox Ruben. Woo! Welcome. Happy Thursday. Thursday already. That means it's the last show of the week for us. I know. It just zipped by. Earnings. That's how it happened. Awesome. Yeah. I love you, Ernest. You've got a couple. You've got one today, so. I've got Amazon tonight, (laughs) and they're expected to post a big profit, so we'll see if Jeff Bezos actually follows through with that. By the way, did you know Jeff Bezos was in Star Trek, the last Star Trek? Yeah, movie? yeah, yeah. I all saw right. all those all stories. Right. That all guy right. is living out every single one of his childhood oh, yeah. dreams. So well, that's, what you, that's what you can do when you're a billionaire. I should have. I should have become a billionaire. What was yeah, I thinking? I know <laughs> your career path was way messed up when you chose journalist. That's terrible. Um, so welcome to the 359. Sorry for that little ramble. We're uh, we're we're just about to start our taping. We're going to be talking about a um, couple of stories. We're talking about Oculus and sort of the. The next evolution of, of VR entertainment and how and VR storytelling, and yeah. VR storytelling, and how you know us, the audience, uh, will will potentially play a part in it. Um, and then we'll be talking about uh, Facebook, Facebook's earnings, Grand Slam, thanks to mobile. Um, and Huge then, surprise. Yeah, <laughs> not really. Well, and then lastly, uh, Apple selling its billion phone. And we've got yes. some fun stats for the podcast. I know that's what you all come for, stats. Three days running of Apple stuff on the podcast. Yeah, the I know. Way, so. we'll, we'll try to do better next week. We have to <laughs> redirect to Pokemon Go or something. So. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like our, our audience is craving Pokemon Go stuff, uh, which, by the way, I evolved a, um, what's the one with two heads yesterday? The and do- turned them into Dodeo to Dodeo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I, Super uh, proud of myself. I, I only know that because I did the same thing like a few days ago. So, yeah, so. There are a lot of them out here. Right, them and Zubat. So and pidgeys, yes. lots of pidgeys. I got I got a Pokemon Go reference into the podcast. There so you go. Very happy about that. All right, as always, if you have any questions about the topics of the day, leave them in the comment section. Our producer Brian will pick out the best questions, and we will try to answer them to the best of our ability. After the after the podcast. After the the formal taping of the podcast. So, right. uh, Brian, why don't we get started? Ready to take away when you are. All right. Start the clock in three, two. Welcome to the 359, where we talk about the top tech news of the day and all the other crap we want to throw in. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. So our own Joan Salzman chatted with the co-founder of Oculus Story Studio, who hinted that the next chapter in VR entertainment content could be putting us in the story. Mm-hmm. You read the story. You read the, the piece, right? Did yes. I? Yes. Of course I read it. <laughs> yes. It's Joan's piece. I hope you read it. I read it in VR. All right. <laughs> What do you think, though? Is that is that what's going to get us to finally embrace virtual reality in a real way? Maybe. I, I, look, I think it's a really exciting idea to create this new form of storytelling, but yeah. at the same time, like, the movies probably took years, I would imagine, to really try to develop, like, what it is that's unique about the movies. Right. I think the same thing is, can be said about VR. It's going to take a long time for them to tool for and sure. figure out what exactly it is. Yeah, VR has its own challenges, right? Like, because it's completely immersive, 360, uh, the director really has to tell the viewer where to look, you know, what's what's sort of the relevant point of reference, right? So yeah. the, the, the action would be happening in one direction, you could be staring at a completely different direction. Well, that's, so that's a very good point. Right. I actually tried like a, like a small VR story yeah. in Google Cardboard, and I kind of felt like I was just constantly craning my head to try to figure out where that point of reference was, yeah. because that was... Like, they were trying to embrace what it is to have VR, where it's like 360, but right. I just kind of felt... A little annoyed. Look, maybe the idea of putting you in the content, uh, having you direct the traffic, so to speak, a little bit, uh, will will definitely kind of help with that. Yeah. We'll see. Definitely. All right, next up, Facebook had another strong quarter, no surprise there. And again, it's all about mobile. Yep. So what was what was kind of interesting about this is, is that Facebook Live has now emerged as like a really important way yep. to share breaking news, which gives Facebook even more importance in our lives. I know. It's, I think for a lot of people, that's where they're getting their news, right? And now that's where they're getting their news and video. Yeah. So And yeah, with Facebook Live, they, they definitely have a hit on their hands. I mean, Periscope and Meerkat kind of, you know, they faded a bit, right? Like It started with use, Meerkat, people don't use then those it was services Periscope. Anymore, right? Maybe Periscope to a certain extent, but right. yeah, Meerkat has already pivoted. Periscope isn't really as significant, and Facebook Live has really taken off. So, right. I, I mean, we'll... We'll see what they do to try to continue to monetize it, I guess, right. because I don't think that they're doing that much with it. But 
um, as people continue to use it, it's just another way to get you to just spend your life on Facebook. Yep, which is sadly what I do. So one quick statistic too is that mobile ad revenue, the bread and butter is ad revenue, yeah. from mobile, 84% of the total, which wow. is really that's impressive. Huge. I mean, that's a real contrast from a few years ago when their strategy was completely scattershot. They didn't know what they were doing with mobile, and all of a sudden, they're back in it. Yeah. All right. Lastly, it's official. Apple last week sold its one billionth iPhone. Now, uh, it has some interesting stats. Uh, it actually took 27 years to sell one billion PCs, 131 years to get one billion cars on the road globally, and 49 years for Disney's theme parks to welcome its one billionth guest. And the iPhone is only nine years old, so pretty impressive, right? Yes. Yep. Also self-serving. Yes. Fine. Absolutely. Fine. Good Absolutely. job. Good job, Apple. Kudos to Apple. Yes. Um, for taking all of our money. That's... <laughs> Um, but yeah, the real question is what happens with the next billion, right? Like, does Apple sustain its momentum from the last nine years? Oh, God. Probably not. I mean, like, we've already been seeing, you know, some right. sort of stutter with that We're already. We're peak smartphone. So. <laughs> we've been at peak smartphone. We've been at peak smartphone for a while, right? Yeah, I would, I would say so. But um, good for them for getting to a billion that quickly. It's yep. really impressive. So. And it's all because of the iPhone SE. <laughs> no, that's not true. That would probably that's be not true. the last reason they got to a million. <laughs> All right, want to know more about these stories? Check us out on CNET. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. Thanks for listening. And that's a cut on the recording. My God, we actually right, made time. Right at four minutes. Amazing. Right? We are getting good at this. We only had to do almost 100 episodes. <laughs> we're, at, we're at 86, right? Jeez, it took 86 tries. 86? Yeah, that's... I would have never... Never expected that. Yeah. All right. Well, look, we've. Uh, by the way, the, the other stat they gave out. Uh, well, I think I guess it was, I oh, mentioned the Coca Cola. The Coca Cola stat was actually kind of cool. Uh, Fifty-eight years to manufacture one billion gallons of Coca Cola syrup. Yes. Um, one billion corroded. Look, these are these are definitely self-serving numbers, but they're it, it's definitely impressive. I mean, we're talking about the billion PCs. Twenty-seven years to sell one billion PCs. PCs built by everybody. Built by everybody. Whereas these are a billion just iPhones. Right. If it was just smartphones, that's one thing. But this is just it's one brand, one company. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. I would say so. Yeah. Do we have any questions? Right. Do we have any questions? Are we taking questions? We haven't gotten anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> then it's Thursday in July. I know so. it's everyone's on vacation. Um, no, I guess we're not taking questions. We'll just, we'll, I mean, if there are any questions that pop up, definitely jump in. But uh, well, I'm kind of interested. Would you guys participate in a VR movie personally? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, look, I think the idea of the pitch is, uh, that's always been given to me is uh, imagine yourself in an episode of Game of Thrones where you're like in the middle of a battle. I'm like, yes, sign me up for that completely. Uh, you know, the story sort of takes it almost to the next level where uh, you may not be like the main character, but you're a side character who can actually affect or uh, interact with the scene around you. I mean, it's not going to be Game of Thrones per se. It'll probably be some sort of computer generated thing. But uh, that idea is definitely has a lot of potential for me. Like, I, I find that really fascinating. I, yes, definitely as an ideal. However, going back to what I said during the podcast, I think it's going to take a really long time for them to get there. Oh yeah. To yeah, really yeah, try yeah. to tool around and figure out like what actually makes sense to have a character influencing a storyline. What right. are you actually supposed to look at? Um, what's the pacing? Different yep. things like that. Yeah. Uh, but my, I, and I my guess is could be really. My guess is a lot of these experiences are going to be relatively short too, like 15, 20 minutes. Like I don't imagine you sitting there or standing there with your VR goggles for an hour and a half, two hours. That just seems like a really excessive amount of time to be in a. A VR system. Like I don't know how long you spent using like the Vive or the Oculus Rift. It's it's not that comfortable after a while. Like yeah, it, you start to feel the weight. It's on a your heavy head, headset. Right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So. It would also be interesting to see what level of interaction you might have with like other people. Let's say you're all watching like a movie together or like whatever yes. you would describe. Yeah, and, like, yeah, yeah. What that's, the social that's, ramifications are for this, right? You're, you're now veering into like there was there was a lot of this in Diamond Age, which is a which is a book. I don't read. I'm illiterate. Sorry. Who was that? <laughs> Stevenson. I'm gonna say Neil Stevenson. Okay. So and someone and will was, correct it you. Was, don't it worry. was this interactive like theater show okay. where you were like part of the show and it was it was like this cacophony of activity. And, okay. Um, that was that was kind of what was perceived where there was this big social element and there was no such thing as like a fourth wall. You were like hmm. part of the action. So wasn't there that's 
that was the play in the West uh, in Chelsea, right? Oh God, what Say, was Say that? No, uh, Say yeah, no yeah. More. Um, <laughs> I forget the uh, I forget the name of that. Play. Right, right, right. Brian, I don't this know if was... you can look it up, but it's that. It's that interactive play where it's like multi This was much more techie focused, but Hamlet? yes, exactly. Was it Hamlet or was it? I think Is that it was the one that's at the hotel? Yes. Ah, uh, man, I'm I'm blanking right now. Um, yeah, I'm the same way. I can't remember. But it's uh, it was one of the Shakespeare plays, but it was like played like different acts on different floors, and you can walk up and down, and you can reverse the sequence, and it was hmm. each act was, and it was totally interactive. Like you can like. Go be up part and, of like, it. You can walk around it. You can. T- I think you could talk to the actors. They they don't respond back to you, but like they're still doing their whole play. But that's kind of like we should get Scott Stein to talk about this stuff because I feel like that's that's all he ever does when he has time off is yeah. go to weird interactive plays <laughs> <laughs> and then tweet about them. It's Sleep fine. no more. Speak no more. Sleep no more. Sleep, Sleep no, no more. more. That's what uh, I yeah. It okay. Might be. All right. Yeah. The okay. So. Consider that, yes. but you don't have to leave your house. Yeah. That would be the VR benefit, potentially. Well, that's promising. It is. I, I just, I think it's very cool that Oculus is trying to do this. Yep. I just think that they're going to have a lot of, like, hits and misses on their hands until they actually figure out what exactly it is. Right. It's doing. interesting that the, the, the co-founder of Oculus Story Studios, he's a former Pixar guy. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, that says a lot for the, the cred there. So. It's a street cred, yeah. You yeah. basically like you can't do anything animation related without going to like Pixar because no, nobody. Like DreamWorks. Like, DreamWorks. Sure. DreamWorks. Yeah. yeah I would say so. Uh, Nuke has a question. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit off topic, but he he wants to know if you would recommend waiting or going ahead to buy the current MacBook Pro. That's way off topic, but we can answer that question. I mean, we did. You talk guys are the experts. <laughs> uh, I would. Probably wait. Wait, 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 wait. When's the next MacBook Pro expected to come out? Uh, Not in September, right? I think there's going to be a refresh. But it's the, the thing of it is, it's well, actually, you could technically buy it now. You could buy the, it. The, now. Look, the 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 key issue is that the the, the latest processor that's out there, uh, or there won't be like another new processor that comes out this year from Intel, right? So there's not going to be like a faster step up next generation a MacBook Pro. They might come out with one that's got some. Like more razzmatazz. Yeah, yeah, but they always think uh, of something. In terms of pure speed and processing power, you're not going to get that huge step up. Not until next year, at least. So I'm kind of, sort of, maybe in the market for a new laptop. Okay. And Dan Ackerman, our PC guru, says uh, you can't go wrong getting a MacBook Pro because there's a MacBook, there's a MacBook Air. Right. You are going to spend a little bit more money on the MacBook Pro, obviously, but right. out of the entire line, it's kind of the best of all worlds. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, you're, you're not going to be disappointed, I guess, if you do end up Yeah, my it. point is that I don't think if you're waiting for a, a huge step-up version with, with more processing power, I don't think that's going to be showing up this year. Yeah, definitely. Um, and that's, that's across the board for all laptops. It's not just Macs. That's right. Windows PCs are not going to get any kind of huge bump this year. Uh, you could expect one maybe early next year. Right. So if you do wait, you might have to wait. Goes back quite to Moore's Law. Yes. Your favorite topic. Let's keep mentioning Moore's Law. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, we just a, lost another viewer. <laughs> we got a comment from uh, Voice of Ghost, which is back on topic. They they say VR would be great if it could be used in interviews and shows like this. Could we have someone on in VR in the show? Ooh. What would that even look yeah, like? Yeah, how would that work? Would would uh would we have to be wearing VR yeah, headsets? Yeah, would everyone be wearing the, the headsets or would someone be wearing a headset and virtually be here? I feel like a next? hologram I might make a little more sense. superimpose them force ghost style like in Star Wars. Yeah, we could we could do like well, we don't have the technology for it here at CNET, but I'm sure that could be achieved somewhere. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's not a bad idea. I mean, the idea of everyone wearing goggles and sitting in their own like home doing this show and then maybe three digital avatars in a central place i don't know oh uh, what <laughs> like we could we could have I just your ideas. my brain <laughs> what i said uh hit us back voice of ghosts we want your ideas yeah please we'll um, we'll steal your idea if it's really great and we could actually do it but. yeah i mean if if it really takes off <clears throat> i guess like the concept of irl will cease to exist yes that's... or it'll be like the novelty That'll be the novelty. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you go on vacation by going to, like, going out to, I don't know, McDonald's or something right. well, like that. Right. Well, I mean, that. look, if I'm working from home, I could, I could do it from my, my office in my apartment. Or we could have <clears throat> Katie Collins on from London. We could have Maggie Reardon on from Philadelphia. Sure. Um, of course, there'd be three digital avatars. <laughs> 
Not actual real people, but who knows? Maybe it gets to the point where like they can get three really accurate representations of us. Pretty soon, we will never have to actually see each other in the flesh. Ooh, I can't wait for that day. Right. Oh, that Especially means I get to be guy. like uh, like a cool like blue dragon or something like that. You right? can be a Pokemon if you want. Yeah, I you... like the big blue dragon more. <laughs> like I breathe, I don't know, like uh, instead of fire. Not a I don't not know, Pikachu. Candy. No. <laughs> Hashtag Ben Gyarados Ruben. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. Well, you could be Ben Dragon Ruben. Sure. Drop the fox. It could always I'm change I'm surprised it. you didn't want to be a fo- like a virtual, like giant fox. Yeah, 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 I could do that. A nine-tailed fox. Um, sure. It's a mythical Asian this, creature. This VR stuff is now starting to terrify <laughs> me. I'm not ready for the future. I don't like this. Uh, I'm, well, I'm totally embracing it. I, I, I can't wait for it to come in a real big way. Like, the stuff we've seen is really cool. Like, have you tried the Star Wars VR demo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the closest that was, you're going to get to that was coming holding closer. a lightsaber and actually like using it in a real way. That, I felt, was a, an enjoyable representation of yep. what VR storytelling could be. Um, it was short, sweet, and to the point. I probably would have wanted it to be a little bit more interactive, but it I mean, was still the, cool. the lightsaber battle at the end was kind of interesting. Although, I mean, it definitely helps you. Mm-hmm. I noticed, like, I, <laughs> I must have looked like an idiot. I was just sort of like... Pfft. Like a tennis racket, and it just went vroom, whiff, whiff. Right. Just, uh, all right. And then um, Han Solo comes in and saves me. So One more before we wrap it up. Yeah. How far off do you think we are from uh, a more consumer-friendly VR scenario, one that doesn't in- involve a really high-end PC or lots of uh, expensive equipment? It's going to take a while. It, well, no. It's, I feel like I would argue it's already here in some ways. If you've got like a Gear VR, uh, okay. there, there are these you know cheap hands, uh, headsets. They're about 100 bucks. If you go on eBay, there's actually a ton of them. Um, that experience isn't that great because it uses that the cardboard technology from Google, so it's not super polished. But I mean, some of that VR experience is here, and it's it's uh, it's pretty approachable. But it just you got a flavor for what it's you get like. a flavor for it. You, yeah. you, it's nothing that justifies the actual pur- purchase of it. Like if you get a if you get a VR headset with for free with a Samsung phone. I think it's fine. It's great. Like, I don't know if anyone would want to buy it. I think uh, Alcatel is doing the same thing. They're bundling a phone with a VR headset. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's a great entry into VR. It definitely gives you a flavor of what things are going to look like. Part of the problem is the content isn't quite there yet, right? A lot of it is just sort of, it's cool and interesting for a few minutes, but, you know, you get kind of tired of it. So. Yeah. I, I personally think it is going to take a while for them to um, speed up the processors, yeah. shrink everything down. Yeah. And make it much, much that, easier. That high-end experience that you'd get at Oculus or uh, HTC uh, Vive, that stuff is going to take a little while. Uh, mm-hmm. And it is, it's, it's a step up. It's definitely more immersive. Uh, it does a better job fooling you into thinking you're actually in a different world. But uh, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a ways away from regular people actually investing in the stuff. Yeah. So, all right. Let's, uh, let's wrap things up for the week. Um, unless, we Brian, any last questions? No, I think that's about it for this week. All right, great. Uh, it's been a good week. Busy week. Thank you very much. Yep. Yeah. Not thanks to you. I did an amazing job this week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as always, if you uh, liked anything you saw or heard here, check us out on CNET.com. Uh, our podcast is also available on iTunes, Google Play, and various other services such as... Play on the spot. SoundCloud, FeedBurner, <laughs> and... Something. Tune in. Tune in. Nicely done. There you go. All right. See y'all next week. All right.